Hey everyone! Uh, welcome to Swiss Knife tutorial devoted to its interaction group. And here we have five functions and one drop down. Let's start from Interactor. If you are familiar with any kind of UI animation, this function will be probably extremely helpful for you, especially when it comes to creating cool hover animations. Let's imagine that you have created these two awesome hover animations. One was done with the help of uh, Vanadium Blinds effect and scale property animation of the text, and the second one was created with the scale property animation of text and rectangle. So I want these buttons to interact with my pointer layer, and that's what the interactor does. So all you have to do is just select the keyframes of hover animation and add to selection the layer you want to be a pointer. And press interactor. So now our buttons are interacting with the pointer. And let's find out how it works and how to set it up. As you can see, Interaction Control Null has two controllers in it, Outer Radius and Inner Radius. These two controllers determine the area around button or 11 reach pointer launch animation. You can adjust the outer and inner radius for all layers at once in this null. But what if I want the animation of button's elements be non-simultaneous? For that, we need to change inner and outer radius for separate button elements. And that's also pretty easy. So I will undo Interactor. I will select all the keyframes once again and the pointer layer. And click on Interactor with Alt key. So that it will create controllers for outer and inner radius for each layer separately. For example, I will reduce the outer radius on the word button, let's say 100, so that the text will start its animation later than a yellow button. And that's how it works. The next function is Dependener. Dependener is about animations based on values dependencies. For example, I want to control progress of this star animation by moving this slider. First of all, you need to select two keyframes of property which you want other animation depend on. So I will create the animation on the slider with two keyframes. Select these two keyframes and press Dependener. As you can see, the button has changed its color and text, and that means that it's ready to apply expressions. Next I will select the animation which I want to be dependent on the slider and press Apply. Cool, now the star is controllable by the slider. I can even remove the keyframes from the slider and move it, and as you can see, everything works fine. Now animation goes when main property changes its value between two limits, which are defined in a null object controller. By the way, you can change these two limits if you want. But what if I want to link the animation which keyframes are placed more randomly? Like this. To make it work properly, you will have to change the scope to layer. So I will undo Dependener work, change scope to layer, select two keyframes on the slider, press Dependener, select these keyframes and press Apply. Now it works like it should. Rotation first and then scale. That's it. If you want to link very complex animation of several layers, just selecting the scope drop-down composition. And do the same things we did before. And that's how Depender works. The next awesome feature we use a lot in our workflow is Animarker. Animarker creates animation playback with markers, so just select animated properties and click Animarker. So that you will get a marker on a new null object. And if I add one more marker, the animation will repeat. Let's add one more, and so on. But if you want these eyes to blink not in the same time, just click on the Animarker with Alt key. So that you will have a marker on each separate layer. Now you will have to put a new markers on them separately. Yeah, that's it! 
Another cool thing is that you can also make reversal playback with markers. For example, this button. I will apply any marker to it. And let's play intro animation here. And I want outro animation in this moment of time. So I will add another marker. And as you can see, there is a reverse animation checkbox on a new object. So to enable reverse animation, just turn on this checkbox. And that's it. And don't forget to animate checkbox state if you want to get both intro and outro animations. Another powerful function of Interactions Group is Offsetter. It allows you to offset layers animation. Uh, for example, I have these five rectangles with no animation, and if I select them all and press Offsetter, script will create a new null object. Now, if you animate this null object, for example, I will animate its position, all chosen layers will offset their basic transform properties values by difference defined by null object movement, with the time offset which you can set with this controller. I will change it to two frames to make it more expressive. Cool, right? But maybe you want the layers to inherit values from null. It is also simple, just check this option. So that all properties except position will be the same as a null object even when null doesn't have any keyframes on these properties. I will, well, I will add some rotation animation, but that will work with any property except position. And by the way, null object also has a step controller. It depends how much layers will have the same time offset parameter. For example, I will type here two, and now layers will be offset in twos. And the last is grid options. Just turn on inherit position from main layer checkbox to work with this settings group. I will delete all keyframes and reset rotation just for clarity. You can adjust the look of grid by changing X and Y offset. And if I want to expand uh, my grid, I just can duplicate the layers and their position will be automatically adjusted. I can also switch between columns and rows order, change their number, for example, three, and so on. I can even create a radial grid so that all layers will be automatically distributed around the main null object. And one interesting thing about radial grid is that time offset will be also radial. Um, let me show you what I mean. I will expand my grid by duplicating layers and create a simple animation on scale property. And that's it! Beautiful radial time offset. You definitely have to experiment with offsetter settings, as this tool is one of the most powerful that Swiss Knife has. But we move further and let's take a look at Revolver. Revolver works in similar way with Interactor, but just with one property, Rotation. So all we need to do is just select all layers and add to selection the main layer. And press Revolver. So that they change the rotation property depending on the distance from the ball. There are two controllers on the main null object for defining area inside which layers will notice main layer. We can make them stare at the ball or turn away from it by adjusting angle controller on the null object. Or we can adjust rotation of each object separately using their own angle controllers. Uh, now you can experiment with this tool as well. For example, I will do animation of ball going through many many doors or gates, uh, I don't know. So turn on your fantasy, think about it. And that's all for now. See you in the next tutorial devoted to placeholders.